Welcome to the tutorial, How to Animate a Cutout Character. In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to animate a cutout character using the animation tools from the Animation Tools toolbar, as well as the Timeline view. So if you recall from our previous tutorial, most of the top half of our character has been rigged with deformers, whereas the bottom half was rigged using the hierarchical system of the cutout style. So in this tutorial, I'm mostly going to be working with the bottom half of our character for that reason. In addition, in the network view, I arranged the module so that you could see the hips and the two legs clearly so that as we're working in the timeline view, you can simultaneously see what's occurring in the network view. So to begin, be sure that the animate button is depressed and by default it always is. And then select the transform tool from the animation tools toolbar by either clicking on its icon here or by using the keyboard shortcut Shift T. Then in the timeline, make sure your character layer is collapsed. So if it looks like this, it's uncollapsed, but if it looks like this, then it's been collapsed. And also be sure that your red playhead is on frame one or the first frame that you would like to start on. Then in the camera view, you can select the body parts that you need to reposition your drawing into the first pose. So just for the sake of creating a different first pose, I'm going to reposition the legs so that they're slightly closer together. Like that. Then you should drag the red playhead across to the frame where you would like to create your next pose. You can also turn on the show onion skin option if you'd like to. Then in the camera view with the transform tool still selected, create your next pose. Then if we grab our playhead here and we drag it back and forth, you can see that the software has created what we call the interpolated movements in between the first two keyframes, so otherwise known as the drawings in between the two keyframes. So let me just select the leg again so that I can show you something. Within the onion skinning, there are two things that are good to know. First of all, that the number of representations of the selected body part that you see here correspond to the number of frames that are within the range of the onion skin. So once again, the range is selected by this blue line with the little triangular tabs at the end. And because we can only go back as far as frame 1 from frame 10, we know that nine onion skin drawings are represented here. And in order to be able to distinguish between the drawings, the drawings that are further away appear paler. So the palest representation of the leg is on frame one, whereas the darkest representation is the drawing on the frame just prior. And you saw that when I selected the foot in the camera view using the transform tool, its drawing was also selected in the network view. However, when I used the keyboard shortcut B to move up the hierarchy, first its peg was selected, then the shin peg was selected, and then the thigh peg was selected. And we know that the thigh peg moves the pegs and the drawings for the shin and the foot. However, if I were just to click on the foot and then use the shift key to click on the shin and the thigh and make a movement, that position information has still been transferred to the pegs and does not exist on the drawing. And we can take a look at that by going into our character layers. So let's uncollapse our layer. And actually, let's select the thigh again here in the camera view. And then click back on the timeline view to put the focus back around the timeline, so this red line. And then click on the center on selection button. And as you can see, we're brought right away to the hero underscore thigh underscore right drawing layer. However, what we really want to look at is the hero's right thigh peg layer, which is the one right here. So if you notice on the drawing layer, there are no little black squares or black lines, which of course indicate keyframes and interpolated movements. However, we do see those things here on the peg. And you'll notice that there are no keyframes for the shin and the foot on frame one. This is because when we set our starting position, we made the movement from the thigh peg and in fact, by making movements to the shin and foot on the second keyframe, I ultimately changed their starting position. 
Another thing I wanted to show you is that if we scroll up, you'll see that there are a few keyframes, so these little red boxes or these little white boxes, which I believe were from setting the bones and the curves from the deformation rig. However, if we continue to scroll up, you'll see that for the most part, there aren't many keyframes here on the first frame. Usually it's a good idea to lock your first position in place for all the body parts by putting a keyframe on the first frame for all of those layers. For example, if we go back down to our thigh, you'll notice that if I select just the shin and then make a movement, you'll notice that no interpolation was created. So let's undo that. But if I go back to the first frame, collapse my entire character, select the first frame of that layer, and then click on this button here, the Add Keyframe button. You'll notice that the keyframe went from white with a black outline to solid black. And that white with a black outline, like I mentioned, shows you that there are deformation keyframes in this row somewhere, even if not on the topmost layer. Or sometimes if you see a smaller black keyframe, it indicates that there are keyframes on the sublayers but not on the main layer and the hero underscore master peg being that main layer. So now let's uncollapse our character layer one more time. And if we scroll down, you'll see that there is now a keyframe on all of the peg layers. So once again, not on the drawing layers, not on this gray strip, but usually just above on its corresponding peg. So now if I go back to the thigh, so let's move to frame 10 again. I'll select the shin actually. Let's center on selection. You'll see that keyframes have been added to the first frame as well as black lines have been added to indicate the interpolation that happened between the first set position and this new second position. The other thing I wanted to talk about was navigating up the hierarchy. So you may have noticed that I used the keyboard shortcut B to move up the hierarchy. So you can do that upward, so going from a child to a parent. So in this case, the foot would be the child of the shin and the foot and the shin would be the child of the thigh. However, you can also move along the hierarchy in the opposite direction. And you can do this by using the keyboard shortcut Shift B. These commands also exist in the top menu under the animation menu. So you could select either select child skipping effects or select parent skipping effects. So the next thing I'd like to talk to you about is the animation button. So if we take our red playhead and we drag it along the timeline to say the 20th frame, and I think I'm also going to deselect the show onion skin, and we also turn off the animate button, and then we create some type of a movement. And let me just go from the thigh again. You'll notice that no keyframes were created in the timeline view. And let me just do something radical to really show you what this does. Say I completely separated the leg from the character. Let's now go to the drawing view and turn on the light table. And you'll see that our character looks intact. And you'll also notice that the cursor is black with the white circle and the bar running through it, which means you cannot use the transform tool in the drawing view. Once again, the drawing view is to show you the drawing and the camera view is used to show you both actually. So you could use either the animation tools to animate in the camera and you're viewing right now a movement that was made by an animation tool or you can use the drawing tools and pretend like the drawing view doesn't exist at all and do both your you know, set up for your animation in terms of the rough, the clean, the tracing, the coloring, etc. in the camera view and then animate. Or you can use the camera view just to animate with these tools and use the drawing view just to draw your character. And if you use the drawing view, you can see that your character is preserved no matter what happens in the camera view. And if we undo that, and we go to this keyframed movement, if you go to the drawing view, once again, that keyframed position isn't there, even though we're on frame 20 or on frame 10. And that's because we just viewed the drawing and not the drawing with the keyframed interpolated movements applied. So in case that wasn't clear, 
Use the transform tool to make movements in the camera. Enable the animate mode to record those movements and use the drawing tools to create the initial artwork for your animation. So the last thing I'd like to talk to you about is how to set the easing for multiple parameters. So let me show you what that means in plain English. If we drag this little black triangle across the timeline to frame 10, what we've done here is we've set the playback to just these 10 frames. And I don't know if you can see it, but there's another little black triangle right here. So as you may notice, this movement is quite mechanical looking. It looks very robotic. Um, the leg is moving at an equal rate or speed from frame 1 to frame 10. So in order to rectify this problem, what we can do is change the ease in and ease out for this motion. And in fact, we can do it to multiple parameters, which means that we can do it for the thigh, shin, and foot all at the same time. So you can do this by selecting a keyframe, holding down shift, and then selecting the last keyframe in the group that you'd like to change the easing for. Then you can right click and select set ease for multiple parameters or you can simply click on this button here in the timeline view which is the set ease for multiple parameters button. So then the set ease for multiple parameters dialog box appears and what you can do is grab this little red triangle what it is is a little handle that allows you to change the Bezier curve. So some of the options that you see here are the filters um, and that allows you to change which parameters this easing will affect. So you can change the easing for the motion, rotation, scale, and skew. Um, we haven't done any morphing so that's why that is disabled. And in fact the only movement that we did make was a rotation and we might have made a slight motion movement as well when we replaced the leg. So if we unchecked skew and scale, it wouldn't really make a difference. Uh, the other set of parameters we have down here are the left and right time ratios and the left value and right value. So right now the right values are grayed out because there is nothing on the right side of this keyframe. However, let me explain to you what uh, the time ratio and value ratios are. So the time ratio is a value that you can enter in a percentage and it's the length of time that you would like the easing to last. So for example, within 10 frames, if you wanted the easing to last for 30% of this total time, then you could enter that in and essentially the easing would last for three keyframes because 30% of 10 is obviously three. Um, the value is the strength of the easing. And in fact, if the time ratio and the value ratio are equal, what you're going to get is that linear curve that we started out with which is what we don't want in this case. We don't want that mechanical uh, movement. So I'm going to put that back. And then what we have are the different ways of applying this easing. So you can just apply. You can close which will not apply what you have here. Um, or you could apply previous which will apply this easing to our current column of keyframes and then jump backwards to the previous set of keyframes and then you can then set the easing for those frames. So it just basically saves you time from closing this uh, set ease for multiple parameters dialog box. So I'm going to apply that and then close. And now if we drag the red playhead back and click on the play button again, you'll see that the motion has changed. So instead of the leg moving at the same rate to get to this position, we saw that it started out very quickly and then slowed down as it hit the apex of its movement. And like a pendulum, if we completed this movement and had the leg come back down, it would go fast, slow as it hits the apex of the curve, and then it would drop down slowly and get faster. So that's if the leg is swinging back and forth like a pendulum. So just for the sake of the example, let me do that quickly. So I'll bring this to 20, I'll bring the playhead across to the 20th frame, um, and I will rotate the leg back downwards. like that and then I will select all of the keyframes and pull this handle out to achieve a similar curve apply and then close and now if we take a look at the full movement 
you can see that it does that fast to slow, slow to fast. And if you would like to see what the opposite easing would look like, I can show you that as well. So this will be slow to fast instead of fast to slow coming uh, in and out of the curve. So it's almost like a little flick or like a little kick. So uh, that's what the difference would be. So the last thing I'd like to talk to you about are stop motion keyframes. So, so far throughout the tutorial, we've created motion keyframes, which are keyframes that allow interpolation, otherwise known as the software creating the drawings in between two keyframes. Um, but a lot of people like to animate by just creating blocks of keyframes. So basically by continually posing their character um, and keyframing each different pose side by side. It's a little bit closer to the traditional animation style where you would uh, draw every frame. So instead of drawing every frame, you would pose every frame. So all this to say that you can globally set uh, all of your next keyframes to be created stop motion keyframes by going to the top menu and selecting animation, stop motion keyframe. And now if you drag the red playhead across to say frame 25, click on the frame and then rotate the leg one more time, you'll see that keyframe was created but that there's no black line between it and the previous keyframe. And if we drag the playhead across, you'll see that the drawing snaps from one drawing to the next. There are no progression of drawings to lead us from one pose to the next. And if you combine many keyframes like this in succession, you still are able to get a fluid movement um, and more precise positioning. Some people don't like the way that the software generates the drawings in between, they really want to precisely set every pose. And in this way, you can also set your own easing manually instead of automatically uh, by deciding if you want there to be a large movement between two stop motion keyframes or a small movement. And then if you decide you change your mind and you would like some interpolation between these two stop motion keyframes, uh, you just have to click on the first keyframe and click this button the set motion keyframe and the interpolation is all of a sudden created and then if you decide you'd like to go back to stop motion you can click on the button beside set stop motion keyframe and I believe another way of doing it is by right clicking and by selecting set motion keyframe or set stop motion keyframe or by using their keyboard shortcuts which are listed right beside so that's it for the tutorial how to animate a cutout character Stay tuned for the next tutorial, how to create templates.